Hello, everyone. Um, I uh, wanted to take this opportunity to introduce you to one of my mentors, Mary Hayes. Hi, Mary. Hey, good morning. How are you? Good, 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 good. Um, uh, it just, it became unethical to me. Um, I have been meeting with you every month in uh, Duluth, Georgia, um, every, every month. And um, since February, and it blew me away, the mindset that I had, and I had no idea until I started talking to you. And I wanted to just share this with other women. Um, so um, do you mind if I ask you a couple of questions just to get us started? Sure, absolutely. Okay, awesome. So how were you personally raised to think about money? Um, well, personally raised, so I'm the millworkers kid from Gary, Indiana. So and my mom actually, when I was born, was a stay-at-home mom. So there wasn't a lot of money. So the one thing about money is a lot of times it was always a no. But something my parents did from day one when they made money, I was a little girl. We would go to credit union and my mother literally would put a quarter into their savings. So there wasn't a lot of money, especially in the early days. But one thing I knew about it, whatever you had, you made sure you saved something every single time you got a paycheck. So that savings element was just grained into me from a little girl because we had to go to credit union and put that quarter in there when I was little. And I'm really old, so hush. <laughs> I love that. I love that. So you started where you were at. Yes, I started where you were at. Yeah, and everybody needs to start where they're at. I mean, you know, you say it can't make ends meet, but if you really paid attention to your money, there's a quarter somewhere or maybe even a dollar or maybe five dollars or maybe now twenty dollars that when the rainy day came, it would be better if you had it. Yes. Um, and fill people in and let them know what uh, is your professional background? Um, well, my professional background is I'm the girl who worked from an early age. I had because there wasn't the money. I babysat to get my own bike. I babysat to buy contacts when I was in eighth grade because I hated my glasses. And then I worked real hard in school. I thought school would be my way out. So I went to Indiana University, got a dental hygiene degree, got a degree in allied health management, went to work for four doctors, two were surgeons, and they submitted the University of Chicago. So I learned how to wire your jaw shut and put your braces on. So I was doing very well in dentistry. Um, we had 50 staff, we were on five hospital staffs and I loved it, I loved it. I, I was the trauma junkie, ER and all that, that is totally me. So I, I saw um, financial services though when I was 27 years old. And the one thing I realized about money is I truly knew nothing about it because we were messing it all up. So, and my husband had been, my husband played college football at Indiana State he had joined the army. He was a captain ranger in the army. And then he was working at the power plant in Northwest Indiana. So we were doing very well. We had two small children, four and seven, but we didn't know anything about money. So when I started learning about money, I, I decided at first off, part time, I came to work. I wanted to know more about how insurance works. You, you spend thousands and thousands of dollars every single year of your life on insurance. But the sad part of it is most people don't even have a clue to how any of it really works. And then when you need it, they don't always have what they need because we don't pay attention to it. And then, of course, the flip side was all my money is sitting in credit union. And this is this is 1985 getting three percent. And my son, Casey, was four. And I didn't know anything. I didn't know that there's this thing called the rule of 72 that whatever interest rate you're getting, if you divide it into 72, it'll tell you the number of years it takes your money to double. Well, my four-year-old's thousand bucks for college is not doubling till 28 years old. Well, I love you all, all you. I love you. I love all the kids, but by 28, I'm done. You got to go figure this out. So I was introduced to mutual funds and just learned how to take my money from the 3% and get it to where it's over in a 10 to 12% account. So and now, and now that's pretty much what I do every day. I, I spend most of my days either mentoring people and how to do it and also helping people make sure they have what they need, especially when there's a crisis. That's amazing. So um, how has your mentality about money shifted since before whenever you were, you know, basically working in dentistry? 
Well, in dentistry, I always saved a lot of money. And, um, but we, we bought some things. We, my husband and I were a little bad in the beginning because when we both started work and started making money. So, you know, we had the big house, we had the built-in pool. We had a Beamer, a vet, a conversion van and a truck, I think. So, and, and we had credit card debt. So we were, we were not paying attention to where we were. And we were just kind of, oh yeah, we make good money so we can buy it. And of course that mentality, once I started learning about money and it's not about, I have enough money to buy it and, and, and or charge it, you know, okay, yeah, I can pay the credit card. Cause you know, like right now in the United States, the inflation rate is over the charts. And now you've got, you've got UPS. And I can't tell you the people I've talked to that are in their forties and fifties that are, and even sixties that they've let go after like 30 years of working there. And then it's crazy because Tuesday I went to Red Lobster and I had not been to Red Lobster in a long time. I did a meeting with a minister at Red Lobster and it was so good. And then the next day I opened up and a hundred Red Lobsters are, clo are closed and they're, and they're filing bankruptcy. So we're in a world right now that if you haven't paid attention to your money and just, just spent and spent and spent and spent, and now the world's collapsing around you. This is when people lose their homes. This is when people lose their cars. This is when, you know, now we're moving to 40 years old in with mom. Yeah. So, so definitely for me, once I started learning in my late twenties, early thirties, it got very important to create wealth. It got very important to have a seven figure bank account. You know, Holly, nobody talks about that. And then it also is, you know, only 11% of women in the United States make $100,000 a year. And pretty much if you're not making $100,000 a year, you're on a paycheck to paycheck schedule. And, and maybe not even that now with, they say a thousand, people, who, families who don't bring home $100,000, they're living on either a thousand out of their savings every month or a thousand, a thousand in credit cards every month. And of course the credit card debt is at an all time high in the United States. So I'm very grateful that by my early 30s, I had learned all this and said, OK, we, we, we don't need all this. We don't need all this. You know, I bought a Highlander. I bought a Highlander in 06. And it's crazy. And that I drove that car to 250,000 miles. OK, I drove in. I went back and went, got my Mercedes. I drove into the Mercedes dealer in 2018 with that car. And nobody waited on me. Nobody, nobody waited on me. And it was like, they were, they were, then they go, then they go, well, how much are you putting down? I go, you have a sign in the window that says 0% financing. Why would I give you, why would I take $60,000 out of my mutual fund, pay for this car cash when you're going to give me five years of payments and no interest? And the guy goes, well, you have to put something down. I said, no, you don't. And then he goes, well, you have to buy gap insurance. And I said, no disrespect, but gap insurance is for poor people. If you, if you wreck your, okay, if I drive the car off the lot, it depreciates $10,000 and somebody hits me, I can pay cash for the car. I can do that. I can pay the 10,000. But if I get gap insurance, it's a thousand more in premium. You're going to charge me. And all that's going to do is go into the finance director's pocket because that's his commission. So of course he thinks I need gap insurance. But you know, it's we're five years down the line now. The car's paid. The sixty thousand's grown to a hundred thousand, and it's still sitting there where it was is supposed to be, and not in a car. So it's just the way people handle, learn to handle your money smart. Absolutely. And as far as women, what mistakes do you see most women doing in their finances? Well, the challenges, you got lots of challenges. You got a lot of challenges for men too. We're not the only ones. They have the challenges too. Yeah. But you, you have to be cautious. Um, you better you better be funding retirement for you. You better be making sure. See, we outlive men by eight years. I mean, this girl, I was a widow at 44 years old. I made a 911 call and 90 minutes later, my husband was dead. So I've been a widow for 21 years now. And I tell people, you got to rely on you. See, because if you don't take care of yourself, you're not going to be able to take care of everybody else. And then you do got to learn a very special word. And the word is no. No, you can't have this. You, did, you just, I mean, we want to give stuff to our kids. We want to provide it. Now I'm grandma. So grandma's even worse. But there's got to be no's in there. It's got to be where you, you are protected against whatever's going to come at you. Because, you know, I tell women, odds are you're going to be head of household if you're already not, because, you know, half of the marriages end in divorce, the other half of them, we kill them because we outlive them. But either way, I tell ladies when I do seminars, you're going to be head of household. So you better make sure you maintain you first so you can take care of everybody else. 
Absolutely. And um, you are doing a workshop actually on Zoom, um, which is so cool because then that means that it doesn't have to be just in one location. It's going to be open to everybody um, and it's going to be live on June 1st. Um, so what are some of the topics that you're, you're going to cover in this woman's, uh, wealthy women's workshop? Well, we're going to cover everything. We're going to talk about how to live rich and how to finish rich. Okay. And, you know, and rich is a, a variation. Some people comfortable is okay. But then on the other side, what are you doing for the community? What are you doing for kids? You know, all my children have college degrees. Nobody has any student loans. My granddaughter has a college degree. Nobody has any student loans. And then the other thing is how you set people up. You know, the granddaughter, when she was a sophomore, she went to buy alumni IUPUI in Indianapolis. I bought her a car, but I went and financed the car, a Malibu, not, you know, a Malibu. I financed it. I put her on the loan. So when she graduated with her, her graduate degree, she had zero student debt and an 850 credit score. So, you know, you got to set people up. You got to set these kids up for success. Most of the time, everybody just, you know, fumbles around and then then you can't go buy what you want. You can't get the 0%. You can't do that. So we're going to talk. We're also going to talk about put your money where your values are. You know, a couple of things for women, we want to make sure the rent's paid. We want to make sure the house payment's paid. We want to make sure the car payments are paid, you know, and then, then the challenge is though, when you look at people's checkbook, what they tell you their values is, and you look at their checkbook, they don't always match. In fact, they don't usually match at all. And then, you know, I'm the big person shopping. Okay. First off, I, I like nice clothes. But the only place I go when I walk into Chico's, I'll promote my Chico's. And, and I know I think Donna's on here. You know, she just loads me up every birthday, every Christmas. I mean, I, I just I never I don't think I've paid cash at Chico's for like years with everybody gives me Chico's cards. But I go to the back corner because back corner, this blouse in that back corner was 20 bucks. This blouse out on the rack was 100 bucks, you know, and then we're going to talk about um, w impulse purchases Stop spending money on stuff you didn't go to the store to buy. And, you know, and I made a limit. My limit was $100 forever. And when my granddaughter was 12, one thing with kids, you got to stretch their vision. So I took everybody on a trip when they turned 12. And part of her trip was New York. And, um, and she, she walks in. We walk into Bloomingdale's. And, oh, my gosh, there's this gorgeous coach purse. It's got the little umbrellas, the flip-flop. It was marked down from, like, 800 to 169 and that snotty nosed daughter of mine said, mom, it's over your budget. You cannot buy it. So I didn't buy it. And then the next day I ran in, it was still there. And then we get in the taxi, we go to the airport. And my daughter says, we have to make a quick stop at Bloomingdale's because my mom wants a purse. And if it's there, she can now buy it. So I've taught her well. Okay. I've taught her well. So we're going to talk about that. And then all the things that you do have to make sure are in place, like a will and a trust. And then, you know, you've got to have proper protection. You've got to make sure that you've got retirement money. And then you've got to know how much money you need. You know, most people don't realize that really to draw 50000 a year guaranteed for the rest of your life, you need a million dollars saved. And, and it's, a lot of people are making 50000 but you're going to be retiring on twenty or twenty-five. And then you've got all, we're going to talk about the government. And we're going to talk about all where they're at with everything. And of course, you know, I tell everybody, you all keep working so I can collect my social security check because- we're not, we're going to use it all up. There's too many baby boomers. We didn't have enough kids. Okay. To keep paying. So we're going to talk about all factors that affect our money, our lifestyle living now, but also living as you age. And then also the kids stuff, the weddings, the college degrees, all that stuff that you want to provide for as a mom. That's amazing. That's amazing. Well, I cannot thank you enough um, for what you have poured into me already. And that you have it all and you still have this passion and this this love to educate and to uh, really put us up on game. Um, so thank you so much. I'm going to put um, in the description the link for you guys to register for the Wealthy Women's Workshop. It's June 1st at 10 a.m. Central, and that's a Saturday, 10 a.m. Central, 11 a.m. Eastern time. Um, and all you got to do is put in your name and we'll email you guys the Zoom link. Okay. Right. Thank you, Miss Emily. Thank you, Mary. Talk to you soon. All right. Take care. Bye.